So what's the big deal with creativity? Why is it so important? Well, it's important for lots of different reasons, but one which I think is crucial to mention here is for the future of work and the future of jobs. So the World Economic Forum came out with this report that listed creativity up the top of this list with critical thinking, flexible thinking, with some of the top skills that employers will be looking for by the year 2025. So this is raising it up there, an international body talking about the importance of creativity in the workplace for hiring. And crucially, it's hard to just go and learn creativity, right? It's hard to measure, it's hard to learn. There's no university degrees just on creativity, but it's important to everything we do. It's important to the future of work and to your future job prospects. So let's dig a little bit under the hood now and think about what is creativity, how we might wanna measure it. So one of the important things when it comes to creativity is something called association or associative links. So let me unpack that a little bit. So if I say lemon and you think of a lemon tree or lemonade, right? Those concepts, those semantic concepts are fairly close to lemon. If I say lemon and you think of a Qantas jumbo jet or a car, they're fairly distant. And when we look at the way the mind works, the way the brain works, they're further in semantic space whereas lemon, lemon tree is much closer. So when it comes to creativity, we want to have more of these long distance connections or a flatter curve. So when we're trying to ideate and coming up with ideas, our brain's going to reach out to the depths of the semantic network and come up with crazy ideas with very different things. So that's the idea of association and how our memories and ideas are all linked in our brain. So why is this important? We want to have these long range connections. We want to be able to come up with crazy radical ideas from when we think about one thing to go a long distance to the other. We don't just want to be stuck in the lemon zone, the lemonade, the lemon tree zone. We want to go to orange, we want to go to banana, to a bike, to a car, and all the way to a jumbo jet. So the first thing is to open the spotlight of attention. So what does that mean? Okay, so the way our brains work is we have attention, something we're, we're looking at with our eyes and we're paying attention to. And think of a big dark stage with a brute spotlight right in the center of that stage there. And that's what our attention is like. It's very narrow and very focused. But we can also relax that a little bit. Like when we're driving, we wanna see the cars and the things happening in our surrounds, out in our periphery. So we can soften our attention. And what's that gonna do? It's gonna enable us to process more things in the environment. And this is important, for this basic idea with creativity. You can't pull something out of your brain or out of your mind that you haven't put in. So the second thing we can do to be more creative is not to focus on prior examples or prior solutions to problems. For example, if we're trying to come up with a new design for a chair, something that's novel, we should not look at other chairs. Looking at other chairs or other solutions to that problem is just gonna bias us. It's gonna prime you to think along the same lines as other people. And if you wanna be creative, that's not what you wanna do. You wanna put all that away, ignore it, go to first principles. What is a chair? What is its function? What is its purpose? And then ideate ideas from there. So thinking about prior ideas, prior solutions to an object, to an idea for a company, whatever it might be, is just gonna bring your ideas closer to what other people have done. It's gonna prime you in a negative way, so you don't wanna do that. So don't think about prior solutions, don't think about other people's ideas, try not to think about what's happened in the past. So here's the third thing we can do to be more creative. I mentioned priming earlier, so here's something interesting. We can prime ourselves to be more creative. We can in fact prime other people to be more creative. And it's super, super simple. All you have to do is tell yourself, one, you're a creative person, and two, tell yourself or someone else that you're gonna be creative in the next little while. Sounds almost too good to be true, right? But data supports this. By priming yourself like this, people perform more creatively in tests of creati creativity. So simply by giving someone permission or by labeling someone as creative, 
you're going to make them be more creative. And that works for other people and it works for yourself. So next time you're going to sit down to ideate, tell yourself you are a creative person and that you're going to be creative for the next half an hour, whatever it's going to be. So you prime yourself to be creative. A great example of priming is a study that showed people images of the IBM or Apple logo right before a test in creativity. And get this, people that saw the Apple logo tested better in terms of creativity compared to those that were shown the IBM logo. And you can think about all kinds of cool psychological theories for why that's the case, but I'm mentioning it just to underline this idea of priming, priming yourself to be more creative, putting yourself in that creative mode or mood or headspace. So priming does work. Now, the fourth tip is to really focus on quantity and not quality. Even though the final product, the final thing you're gonna build or do, yes, you want quality, sure. But when you're ideating, when you're coming up with new ideas, don't worry about quality. You don't wanna edit while you're coming up with new ideas. Don't be an editor. Just focus on quantity, right? If you start judging and editing, you're gonna narrow that focus down very quickly and you're gonna reduce the number of ideas you're gonna come up with. That one little idea that seems crazy, ridiculous, whatever, might be the key to something, some great future, to some amazing innovation. So when we're ideating, just go for high volume, go for lots of ideas, as many as you can. Doesn't matter how ridiculous, embarrassing, illegal, whatever, come up with these ideas. Write them all down and later on, we can go through, edit them and judge them, and do a very different process. But we wanna separate those two processes. So number one, open that spotlight of your attention, right? Process more things in the periphery so you can put more things in the bank into your memory that you can pull out later. Number two, avoid prior examples or prior solutions to a problem. They're only going to bias you and prime you, which is going to drag you to be more similar to things in the past. And you're going to take a hit in terms of novelty. Number three, you can prime yourself to be more creative. This is really easy. Just tell yourself how creative you are and how creative you're about to be right before an ideation session. And now four, quantity over quality. Just come up with as many different ideas as you can. Crazy ideas out of left field. Don't worry about editing, judging. The quality thing comes later. So they're the four take-home tips to help you be more creative. So I hope this mini class in creativity helps. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and remember, everyone is creative and can be more creative.